As Alessia mentioned, there is a digital doubler inside this camera. So the camera lenses that you're going to put on, the, on, on this beautiful piece of machinery all have a doubler built in, which means you can flip a switch and you'll magnify by two times the image on the camera. What's the problem with doing that optically, though? Light loss. You're losing two, three, maybe four stops of light when you do that. So Sony realized and picked up on this put inside the F800 an electronic doubler, which gives you basically the same thing, 2x magnification, except it doesn't suffer the light loss. It's taking all that information in and electronically magnifying it, rather than optically magnifying it, which maintains the light. We're going to go back to Sherry for a moment for another question coming in. Thanks. Um, Wally Gator's asking, can you get a 444 out by uh, HDSDI? It's a good question, Wally Gator. At the moment, you cannot get a 444 out. You can, however, get the 422 out, and it will be uncompressed. So the, the SDI outputs happen before the codec gets recorded to the disk, compressing it to 50 megabits a second. The HDSDI output could be 3 gigahertz a second, so it's going to be gorgeous. Won't be 444. Sorry, Wally. All right, shall we continue? Please. As Alessia mentioned, there are two LCD monitors on the camera. Um, <laughs> this is a tough one to get a shot of because I got black over there. However, here's number one. Bam, that works like your camera LCD viewfinder. You can see what's going on. You can get your focus. And you can get information if you want, sort of similar to a viewfinder. But a second one that is always available, regardless of the information you've got on this LCD window, is right here. This is giving you your time code, your disk remaining, and also your battery remaining. Pretty awesome, because you're always going to need to know that information, and you don't always want it up either in your viewfinder or on your LCD window. Your audio guy, for instance, could sort of pop up and say, aha, 15 minutes left on the disk, or you're going to have to change your battery soon, something like this, without having to interfere with your view of what's going on through the camera. So two LCD windows. In the two of the same thing theme, we've got two HDSDI outputs, which is totally awesome. You've got one HDSDI output. It's going to work great for your program out. A second HDSDI output, which you can actually superimpose the data on. So your engineers or your DPs or you know, anybody really can see menu information, viewfinder information, all the kinds of things that you'll need to know about the camera, about the metadata that's going on. In the topic of metadata, because we're in the XDCAM HD format, you can apply essence marks while you're shooting. So if you're to hit the lens return button once, you apply essence mark one exactly at the frame that you hit it. And you can double tap the lens return button to apply essence mark two while you're shooting. For instance, say you're shooting a soccer game and you're supposed to cover two soccer players, uh, Del Piero and his buddy. Who's Del Piero's buddy? Help me out here, Mikey. On Juventus. Gilardino, thank you very much, Ricardo Valdez. All right, so every time Gilardino's running with the ball, dribbling it up, you hit the essence mark once for Gilardino. Every time Alessandro Del Piero gets the ball, you hit it twice for Alessandro Del Piero. Then you bring all your footage back to the truck at the end of the game. You can sort your footage by essence mark. You can say, give me all my ones over here and all my twos over there. And you've got metadata that the camera operator can capture live on the camera. That's pretty awesome. Um, all right, let's continue. The audio actually brings something different. What you're used to on the uh, dual XLR inputs of a camera would be line input, mic input, and mic plus 48 volts. Well, all three of those are available, but now you've got a new option, AES-EBU. So right here in the two XLR inputs, you can switch between the original three, mic, mic plus 48, and line, but you also have the option to bring in your digital AES-EBU. Now, I know all of you are starting to use AES-EBU audio. That's very important, right? Maybe, maybe not. But in a couple of years, that's going to be vital. Uh, it's another way to future-proof the camera. How are we doing, Sherry? I have, I have another question for you um, right. regarding cost. Cost. LL Cool J Cufflinks asks, uh, he's our documentary producer, and he asks the cost on the camera. He, he, he's, uh, he's clear on the benefits of the usage. Thanks for writing in, LL Cool J. We actually have a, a celebrated <laughs> Midtown Video customer who has purchased at least one of these PDW F800s. I'd like to give a warm welcome to Buddy Tyler in the audience. Buddy, thank you for joining us and for being a PDW F800 customer. Can you give me an idea, just a rough neighborhood of what this camera costs? 
Okay, about 38.9 on the camera. You, you will have to purchase a viewfinder separately. Those are about $75 million, roughly, give or take. Um, give us a call, send us an email. We will send you a complete detailed proposal on an F800 system. Buddy, thanks for your input, man. I really appreciate that. Um, let's continue talking about some of the inputs and outputs of the camera. Now, I mentioned that it's got two HD-SDI outputs. Those also can be down converted to standard def SDI. Pretty awesome. But apart from the outputs, you've got an input. You can actually take, with an optional uh, input board that you can install on the camera, an SDI input. So if you're at a news event and they're giving everybody a, a pool feed, an HD-SDI or even an SD-SDI pool feed, and uh, they don't want you shooting, but they're going to give you sort of the program output of their mixer, you can come right into this camera, HD-SDI, and use it as a deck. So leave your decks at home. You just need this one device. Now, you can also get a composite input option board. Pretty crazy. Here we are in the HD world. Some people are still using standard definition. Well, no problem. You show up. They say, hey, don't worry. We've got a pool feed for you. And they give it to you. And instead of an HD SDI signal, it's a composite signal. You say, what are you jokers doing here? We're, uh, we're trying to get this done in HD. They give you a composite. No problem. Option board available for the PDW F800 that allows a standard definition composite input. And here's the kicker. You can either record it in standard definition, or the camera will automatically upconvert it to high definition for you, even though you're getting a composite feed. Now, that's not a standard feature of the camera, but it is available as an option. Pretty awesome. All right, let's talk about what comes in the camera that you don't have to buy extra. You know that it can record in 422, 50 megabits per second HD. However, it's got a bunch of other formats that you can record in. 420, 35 megabits per second. In case you've got to exactly match your EX codecs, like your EX3s are shooting, your PMW 350s are shooting, their highest resolution, 420, 35 megabits per second, obviously this camera can handle it. What about standard definition, you might ask? Well, it can do that too, both in the IMX format and in standard definition DV cam. I know it's crazy, people are still shooting in it. You want to know what's the camera to buy right now that's going to let me do everything that I used to, plus all this HD stuff? PWF 800. Why? Not only can you shoot in the 422, 50 megabit per second, but you can also set it to standard definition DV cam and record straight to the same discs. You can do that in 16 by 9 or in 4 by 3. So it's really versatile in the codecs that it can record.